I think it takes a pile of bricks for us to make a home But I'm not sure, but I heard mountains grow from just one stone Block after block, hey, block after block Shouts out to Matt and Kim on this beautiful Tuesday, man Welcome to the Lone Maid's Asylum Show Welcome, welcome, welcome Thank y'all for blessing me with your attendance into the asylum, if you will Every single one of us has joined the asylum once, uh, once in our lives. This is the most unorthodox uh, podcast that you will ever experience in your life. Welcome, this is the Low Maine's Asylum Show. I am your humble host, Low Maine. I go by many other names. There's a lot of other AKAs that you can dissect, divulge, search into, but one of them is Professor Vanessa. El Tecate 69, even though I don't snitch. I mean, you, you know, the Takate part. <laughs> but welcome, though, y'all. We got a lot of beautiful things that we're going to go over today. Um, before we do go into that, everybody watching on the video, um, everyone that checks out the podcast, the audio drops every single Tuesday. When the visuals drop, Wednesdays, 8 p.m., YouTube. Now, if you guys are definitely watching on YouTube, man, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, like, share with your friends, and turn on that notification bell. I'm telling y'all, the shit, the algorithms will definitely help the show in the long run. So please help me help the show. I really appreciate y'all, man. But today, I want to dissect some things. I just closed my move, move ring on my Apple Watch. Shouts out to all Apple Watch users out there. Carlos! My guy! So, today, we're we going to just divulge into many things uh the very first thing that we're gonna go into is um last week i have experienced like one of the very firsts something happened to me last week that i that i feel that i need to come to uh, i need to come talk to the world about i need to come tell the masses about because this shit was wild y'all i got jumped I'm serious. I got jumped. I got beat the fuck out of. Like, these niggas beat the fuck out of me senselessly. And y'all might be thinking that, like, I got physically jumped. No, bro. I got beat up by 20 people. Um, but on the keyboards, though. <laughs> these niggas were writing all types of, like, the threats. All types of like buffoonery. Let me go into it. Uh, for real, Nina. For real. Like, let me go right into it. Like, this shit is the most craziest thing. So, this random ass kid on on the Twitch streaming world. I don't know this dude so well. Um, he's in the Twitch streaming world. Now, he said something about a kid. He called that kid gay. And he decided to like laugh about it. He called this kid gay. He's like, oh, 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 da, 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 and then like I was like, okay. So I just commented right on this post on this dude calling this other young ass kid gay for no apparent reason. This kid's from Sweden. Wanted to come out here. Wanted to come out to America. So other dudes like, can you fly me out to America and show me like many dreams? And then so this nigga's like, yo, this nigga gay, bro. Talking about show me many dreams. Again, for everyone that did not check out that episode, people that don't live here in America, motherfuckers that don't dwell in the same cultures that we dwell in, see this shit on Netflix. They see all of this American lifestyle on Instagram, on the YouTubes, on all of that shit. So when they see that shit, they wanna come out. They wanna be a part of that fucking culture. So this nigga wrote his favorite Twitch streamer at the moment probably, and then he's like, yo, man, fly me out. And his favorite Twitch streamer called him gay. And <laughs> I threw a rock at that dude. And then all of his um, people, the people that watch him, um, got into my stream last Wednesday, bro, like about 20 of them. And they gave me a literal onslaught of words. <laughs> These niggas were keyboard warriors. Like, the most keyboard gangsters I've ever seen in my, like, in my life. It's like, I put money on it. Like, and it's not even like, 
and I'm not even trying to test anybody because everybody knows us around here, right, Nina? Everybody knows us around here. <laughs> uh, but um, I'm not trying to say anything, but I would give a hundred dollars to one of those 20 people, a hundred dollars, like straight into your hand, if you would ever say that shit to my face. <laughs> like, I will give you money out of my hand if you would ever divulge and say some dumb ass shit like this. Some dude was like, you faggot ass nigger. The ER on the end, all right? Some other guy was like, you should kill yourself. Some other guy said, I'm gonna be, uh, I, I'm a worthless, a worthless ass n-word. And like, this is all that, like, this, this is probably 14 year old motherfuckers. <laughs> and the most craziest thing is these niggas talking that fucking saucy. I dare my nephew to talk that saucy to somebody. I, I fucking dare him. If it's not, if it's not uh, unsanctioned. If like someone did like, if someone pushed that out of him, I get it, yo, that's, but if he's just doing that just to be spiteful, to be, like, you know, negative, I dare one of my family members. Cause we're not gonna stand on that disrespect shit. But when people do disrespect, it's one of the most greatest things. I think um, all of us, we can all agree as a collective that, you know, I say it all the time on this show. Um, uh, uh, Michelle Obama says it the best. She says, when people go low, you should go high. But I believe that we should follow the Charlemagne the God strategy. And when people go low, you should take it all the way to the fucking floor with them, bro. So when these niggas got into the, you know, uh, comments and everything, like all of them were like, die slow, da 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 da. I was like, yeah, man, it's all good, man. It's a, like, it's all good. That's why your mom got herpes. That's why y'all still using your mama's Wi Fi. That's why some of y'all don't got reliable cars. And <laughs> some of y'all not even 18 yet. So I'm not even gonna get into that one. <laughs> We're just gonna leave it right there. It's your whack ass. Still getting driven to school and shit. <laughs> Yo, the most funniest thing. These niggas just, like what the fuck? Who was that? Yo, wrong places. And shots out to I forgot his name. I don't, well, his name on there was Est Estupido, but I don't want to call you stupid, bro. But this nigga was like, you should go into that dude's uh, stream and then you should go talk shit to him. I was like, bro, I'm not like, we're not going to do back and forth online. Right? <laughs> like, we're not going to, like, I'm not the back and forth type of person online, bro. Like, if there's really a problem, if there's really a problem, we're gonna handle it and address it that easy. Like, it's really that easy. But this whole tr trolling world, this whole trolling nature of calling people out of their names, telling them to kill themselves, da 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 da, man, I didn't grow up like that, bro. Whenever that we told people to kill themselves, we meant it. <laughs> we meant every single word of that shit. And like, now when people say this, I'm like, Y'all just saying words? Like, man, I don't know. I know. Pull up, skirt, the knee. <laughs> Need a towel. <laughs> we ain't got no time for play. I, like, I'm telling you. And I think that is where the disconnect is. I think that's where I'm having the disconnect with the new generation or with this internet generation. Some motherfuckers, I think, live inside of social media in this like fake electronic world so much that they don't believe that there's, you know, consequences for shit. People feel like that they live in this safe ass circle that no one can fucking poke into that circle whenever they fucking want to and shit. Man, come on, man. I'm telling you, come on. It's just like that shit was the most hilarious thing because it all comes back to one thing. And I'm only telling you that whole story just to tell you, I told every single one of them, bro. Phoenix, Arizona. Pull up if y'all want to. Like, it's that easy. It's um, uh, now since the show is visual, like, you know, even though, like, you know, since we go visual on the shows, um, everyone above 18, 
uh, can sign a little waiver, and we can whoop your ass right on TV. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something else, though? Wouldn't that be something else? Yo, that would be one of the dopest podcasts, man. Little te technical difficulties and shit, bro. But for real, man, like just run up on people. Right on the show. Right on this nice little... Um, I don't I don't think I can tussle another man on the couch because that shit gay. And I have no problem with um, the LGBTQ community, but I'm not trying to roll around on the couch with another man. <laughs> so we might probably have to move the couch out of the way, but it can definitely happen. Uh, <laughs> Yo, I really appreciate everyone that really, um, really enjoys the comedy. N Nina said, but a safe place is the internet. Shit come out, um, shit come outside. A, B, dope. Uh, f f yo, we should second that, that we should have waivers and all. Like, these motherfuckers sign a quick waiver, right, Nina? We'll even wear gloves for them. And, like, I don't even mind wearing gloves, like... It's, it's one of those things that I just want to see somebody's nose bleed or something. That I'm like, I'll put the gloves on. I'll just keep, I'll keep pressing that button. <laughs> Yo, um, but it's just one of those things, y'all, that I think we should say, like, just keep all the wrong words for all the wrong people. And, you know, and even though that trolling exists, y'all, trolls, 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 please make sure that Make sure that none of your words can get back to you because if somebody finds you for the words that some of y'all are spilling on this internet, wow, my God, bro, we got slapped for less back in the day. Leave them gloves at the stop. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Leave them gloves. At yes, that's exactly how. <laughs> but it's the most. Uh, I like. I think. I would just, I would just really appreciate for, you know, all my young ones out there to really live a very noble life, live a life that you can back up with your words and your actions. Um, because, and I don't think it's y'all fault, by the way, too. And I don't think it's the young people's fault at all, because the social media be lying to y'all. The social media be telling y'all exactly how to act. And y'all think that's exactly how y'all act. Or how y'all need to act. I seen this wild ass video the other day. This 19 year old kid. 19 year old, uh, years old. Somewhere out in Atlanta. Um, him, and his, uh, him and his homie. Shot some dude. And he stole the car. Put the dead body in the trunk. Got pulled over. And I'm watching this like police body cam video. And the cop finds the dead body. And then. Two seconds after he finds a dead body, this dude just starts crying. He's like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do it, man. I didn't do it. And the whole time I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, bro, you would not be in that situation if it wasn't for social media. I'm, pro like, I'm sorry. He would not be in that situation if it was not for this dumbass bullshit called social media. He crapped at the end. And he will definitely start singing like a canary inside of there. What up, King? But, nah. I think nobleness is what we need to live by. Um, I truly do appreciate people that, like, that are genuinely them. You know, like, transparent as fuck. They're just them. And I can say that about Nina. Nina, thank you for being you all the time. <laughs> You're a rock star. It's, I'm telling you, like, you never meet a lot of genuine friends anymore. Like, people that keep it fucking real with you from the jump. Because I, like, I feel nowadays, like, everybody and their mamas, like, and it all kind of branches off from the, from the, the trolling. I feel like everyone got this weird-ass agenda that they, like, want to push. And... They like kind of keep their like you know agenda like in their head and like and, and but they don't tell their close ass friends and everything and like and genuine ass people like us bro like we can tell that like you're hiding something a and b we're like yo what the fuck are you hiding like are you trying to hurt me are you, like are you the, like, like what, I thought we were cool like why are you trying to hide shit from me <laughs> like 
what the f what are you doing? Like, yeah, you, like, you on the defense mode. Why? And that's one of the biggest things that I think we need to start breaking out of again. I think the world made us bitter. I think we need to start opening up more. Um, talk to people. You know, if there's something on your mind, talk to them, positive or negative. Bring it up. It's something that needs to be talked about. It's making your insides feel some way. Exact, Nina said it the best. She said, I call it how I see it. And that's exactly what you should do, people. I think people are so used to bending their backs and like being okay with stuff and like being like, okay, no, I'm gonna compromise here and I'm gonna compromise here and I'm gonna compromise here. And after your fourth compromising, you blow like a fucking grenade and like everyone's like, what the fuck is wrong with them? And then you're even like, yo, what the, like, you know, like how did I blow up like that? Cause you out here not truly standing on your true intentions. Be you, be you. Ladies and gentlemen, the most genuine ass people, I promise you, find the most genuine ass people. And it's just true spirits find true spirits. And I feel with that being said, all these trolls, all these fake motherfuckers got some big ass groups that they hang out with. And just like how like kinds find like kinds over here, like fake people find fake people all day. And they steady perpetuate their fakeness into more fucking tornadoes and like these dumbass shits and like you turn back around and that's the brand new trend in the world. That's the brand new cool thing in the world. It's wild. No. If I can give you anything, if Lo Man can tell you anything, man, think for yourself. Thinking with the masses ain't gonna help you do nothing. Nathan. And think about it, that guy had 20 motherfucking slaves to go negatively talk for him inside of my like channel. He said something, these guys were like, oh, we're gonna run right over there. And that's exactly what they did. That's so fucking sad, bro, that somebody like made you leave your position and go talk to somebody else that you know nothing about and spill some like negative hate shit. <laughs> and these are the people that we're supposed to uh, share this earth with. Day by day, I feel like Thanos was so right with that snap. <laughs> it's wild, bro. It's wild as fuck. I'm telling y'all. But we gonna get into some lighter things because we're going to leave those motherfuckers alone. And that was, uh, I'm going to take that as a sign from the peoples upstairs. <laughs> we're going to get into my boys, the Steelers. Hey, man, this last Sunday, we had a fucking crazy ass game. I'm telling you, the, um, playing the Ravens is never a fun time. Uh, the Ravens are our rivals. Like, these niggas, we don't like each other. And even the Ravens' defense was, uh, right? <laughs> like, why? The Ravens' defense, um, <laughs> uh, Rokon Smith came out and said, yo, I'm, uh, I'm not, uh, for you to be a true Raven, you have to beat the Steelers. And, I'm so glad that my boys were like, nah, bro. Like, we're going to take that straight to the chest and we're going to go straight at it. They went out there. They got it done. But we do need to talk about a few things about this team, man. Now, Pittsburgh has been my favorite team since I was a youngin'. Um, I've been rocking with them. I like the loyalty. I like the culture that is always around Pittsburgh. Like, these niggas are just built tough. Um, everything about them, like they just want the grittiness out of it. Like, you know, they always want to work for their win. And that's me always, man. Um, I want to let my hustling talk for me. So most of the time, I want to let my actions, you know, win for themselves. So that's definitely what a stealer is. This last four years, 
I'm gonna tell you right now, has not been what the fuck the Steelers have been like ever. I don't know what this, I, just like the trolls, I don't know what this fucking brand new like mentality that we have on the Pittsburgh Steelers nowadays, bro. It's weak. It's weak as fuck. Somebody has to say it. Like, coming from one of the most strongest teams. Like, we used to have motherfuckers that used to tackle dudes that would put them on their back. Like, dudes you used to get knocked out flat like right after. Like, and some hard-hitting players. And now we have dudes that are running away from tackles. Run towards a tackle, bro. What the hell? We pay you to run towards a tackle. What are you doing? <laughs> Makes no sense. And um, our number one running back, not Najee Harris, dope ass dude, but he is the 39th running back in the league right now. 39th. And that might not sound crazy to anybody, y'all, but there's only 32 teams in the whole motherfucking league. <laughs> it makes no sense. 32. And he's 39. Yeah, bro, what the fuck? What do we, How? How? What are we doing here? What are we... The... Offensive coordinator is definitely not picking up. This nigga is not. Um, I don't know how he still has a fucking job in Pittsburgh because uh, damn near uh, Big Ben wasn't listening to him at all when Big Ben was with us. Big Ben said that in a, a recent podcast. He's like, yo, Matt Canada would call it play and I would be like, nah, bro, we ain't going to do that. <laughs> The, to not listen to your offensive coordinator, that just really means that you have no faith in this nigga. Like, it's like, nah, bro, I, I know better than you. And saying that to offensive coordinator, wow, bro. Big Ben knew better than him. Right now, he's putting Kenny in some fucking crazy ass situations. Kenny has 12 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. He has two more touchdowns than what he threw in interceptions. And we call that our number one fucking quarterback. I'm not even blaming him. And some people are saying, give him time. He needs time to learn how to play ball. Like he, he's not seasoned enough. He needs you know, enough football games. Nah, bro. We gave you all of that as soon as we gave you that money. I think as soon as they paid you, that's just saying, yo, I will produce. I don't need time. I will learn how to get better, but I'm gonna start at a, at a standard level because the standard is the standard here at the Steelers. But no, 12 uh, touchdowns to 10 interceptions. Fire Matt Canada. These niggas keep trying to say that we gonna have running plays. We gonna do running plays. We gonna do running plays. They do running plays three and out. First, first down, they go for a running play. Don't even get a yard. Second and 10, they go for a running play. Third and 10, or third and long, sometimes but they even tackle us back then. They know that we're gonna pass. So when, as soon as we try to pass, incomplete, interception. Can't even uh, catch it. Uh, dudes are not where they need to be. The offensive line can't even hold motherfuckers, so Kenny Pickett's getting fucking hit. The offense sucks. The only way that we have wins right now is the motherfucking defense. You thought that we were going to win that Browns game without the defense? Fuck that, bro. The defense is the only fucking people that are keeping us in this game. And they say that Whenever the Ravens and the Steelers play, it's always a defensive game. But our offense is not doing shit. Lamar Jackson was out there at least running back and forth a little bit. Scoring. What the fuck were we doing? They had like a third and like a 12. And he found Andrews wide open. Levi Wallace out here not catching shit. 
a whole ass safety and he's always 10 yards away from people. I just don't understand that. Like, bro, like, do you not want to be close? Do you think that it's going to be lower than like anticipated? Stick to your guy. Aguilar was right behind him. And this nigga had like a 10 yard spacing. And what the fuck? 10 yards? That nigga's gonna run circles around you as soon as he starts running. We need, like, we're the worst in stopping runs. Nina, I love you. Happy Sunday. Are you out of here? Um, but we're the worst in stopping runs. We need to do better. The defense is a whole lot more sound than the offense. The offense just sucks. Fire Matt Canada. And I know that like that's the biggest bandwagon now that everybody wants to jump on. Everyone wants to fire the offensive coordinator, but it's fucking true. The last four, three or four years, we have not had a game that we had more than 400 passing yards. Four years have not had a game that there was more than 400 passing yards. Every single team did that at least once already this year. Fire Matt Canada. And just like with the trolling shit, I'm not the one to troll people. I want people to all have a good life. I want everybody to be, you know, living nicely. I want you to get paid nicely. I don't like people to lose their job, bro, but if you ain't fit for the position, you gotta go. This nigga's garbage. He didn't do good back in college. I don't know why the fuck we got him now. Fire Matt Canada. Steelers. Fire Matt Canada. <laughs> I don't know how much times you want me to say that in like a fucking sitting. It's atrocious. It's hard as shit watching my team day in and day out with no pulse. Everybody has been saying this with no identity. We have no fucking identity on offense. I don't even know who we are. Pickens catches some balls. He doesn't catch the, uh, some other ones. Deontay Johnson is definitely hurt right now, but whenever he's back, he catches the ones that we do need him to catch, but the ones that we do need him to catch also, he drops slips through his hands um he has been working on his reception game but still bro it's wild if it's not the players it's the coaching because we definitely have the players we have young ass energetic players folks ready to play that just need to be a bit more physical but ready to play let's give each other a helping hand man let's give each other a brand new playbook let's get a bit more dangerous in here teams out here looking like juggernauts the Niners the Chiefs the Eagles the Bills the Dolphins like looking like juggernauts other teams looking sorry as fuck man Steelers fire Matt Canada I'm gonna leave y'all there, man. Thank y'all for joining me on this beautiful last Tuesday. But that being said, follow me on the social medias. Instagram, Lomay19, no, what the hell? Instagram, Fresh Prince of the underscore West. Snapchat, low main nine, nine, uh, uh, what is wrong with me today? <laughs> Instagram, Fresh Prince of the underscore West. Snapchat, low main 1990, man. I really appreciate everyone that checks out the show. Thank y'all for checking it out on the audio, on every single place that you guys can find this show or where you can find this. I'm high. I've been high since yesterday. I went to the Earl Cup. Make sure to check out that video right before this. <laughs> but yeah, 
Find us at every single uh, podcast platform that you can find us. And I appreciate every all that checks out the show on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe if you do check it out on YouTube. Share it with your friends. Share it with your loved ones. Share it with the ones that you hate. Thank you all so much, man. Allow me with this parting gift. Drink your water. Tip your bartender. And let's go Steelers. Let's fire Matt Canada. I'm going to see you all later.